next speaker is uh, Monica Bungie. Monica's from Wayne County, uh, Ohio, and she's going to talk about reclaiming our food markets. When she's ready. Right. Hi, good morning. Um, so, I had a lot of the same ideas that the previous speaker had, and what we wanted to do is get small scale farmers to get together and uh, sell together and have better markets for that. Uh, so, essentially, it was the same thing you were doing, but just a little bit of different tact. So, our great idea is actually not. That this is the people that were involved. Uh, it's myself in the middle, Martha Gaffney. She is from Ecuador and she does um, ethnic farming, she calls it. She's not organic, certified organic, but she does these organic practices. And Jennifer Grahovec is certified, naturally raised, naturally grown, and not certified organic. And we all got together and wrote a group grant with their. To apply for this great idea, which was to own, have farmers own their own distribution system and get the best price for the farmers. So it's definitely a very farmer oriented target to small scales in our farm, small scale, small scale farms in our area. Uh, so, Wayne in adjoining counties, that's where we are. And our idea was to start this to a multi farm CSA. So distribute a fixed amount of produce, like $30 bag CSA, where we would all contribute different parts to the basket. The idea being then that we don't all have to grow 30 different things. We could have a really nice assorted basket and we would just divide who brings what when. Um, plus allocate specific products. We wanted to set up contracts before growing. So that, okay, you know, I give you this much money, you grow the beans for the CSA, and then after you deliver them all, we'll give you the rest of the money. Um, and I go to uh, Cleveland, in Akron, so we really wanted to sell this in Northeast Ohio in the urban areas. We are in Worcester. We have local roots farmers market. Um, we have a farmers market there. I have a feeling that we were maxed out with our customers. We kind of reached all the people we could there. So, and as being part of the, our local roots markets from the founding of it, um, you know, you can only put so much stuff on the shelf, and so much will be sold, and the rest will spoil. That's one of the lessons learned. We needed, but on the other hand, we had this beautiful farmland, these incredibly <coughs> good farmers. And they had not enough market. So that was a way of increase the farmers' profit, divert the produce up to the urban areas so where it wasn't being reached. So that's what we said to do. It's not always what you end up doing, but uh, we also partner with local roots because they have a place where we could get together. We have a cooler there, so we could store all the produce there before we sorted it out. Um, of course, I'm very involved in local roots, so I know all the working center. And it just made sense we have the same shared goals, shared values. Uh, and it would provide additional market potential from some of the local roots producers who weren't able to sell in the market. If we really have limited the market space because there's just not enough customers. So there's no point in having people bring stuff so they can get wasted. So say, well, maybe we can accept more producers for local roots, but divert this. Uh, and they do have an online system that is not is being underutilized. It was when we first started it used a little bit, but it just kept people weren't ordering online. People want to go to the store and buy them. So we thought if we went to Cleveland, that would might be a really good system where they could order products from the local roots market and we would package it and bring it into the CSA basket. So that was kind of the, the idea, original idea. What we asked for, a manager. <laughs> and I, was, I didn't want to say anything, but that, that was 
I've been doing this for a long time. I have experience being part of food organizations and farmers are busy. They don't have time to manage other farmers. And so we really wanted to be, to be a manager, a driver, and a marketing person. So a lot of the funds we asked were to pay people to do the work. Uh, we also asked for fund, for farmers to host field days, for marketing materials, mainly computer printing, packaging materials, warehousing tours, maybe this is where local goods come in, so we could use their facilities. Um, what we had to do, and I know there's going to be a um, forum on how to apply for a SEA grant, but I'll just put the plug. We apply for the grant in November. They tell you if you get the money in about March, and we got our funds in July. And there was a little bit of back and forth with budget provisions in that period in between. Um, so we really, we wanted to start last year. We got the funds in July. It was a little late to really start a full-fledged CSA. And if you're interested, in, I'm sure you will get this at the forum. Uh, this is the website, and if you want to get all the information about applying for grants, go to the website. I really appreciate all that you guys have done for farmers and all these grants. Um, then after you get the grant, you're not done. <laughs> you still have to be in contact, communication with them, uh, you get progress reports. They don't give you all the money at once, and I understand why, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> so uh, I'm used to do my progress reports pretty soon, and then when you're done with the grant, give your final report. So what we did not do with the funds, one thing we realized is we're getting all this money and like, okay, who's responsible for paying the taxes on this money and how are we going to divide this? So we decided to form a business and we hired a lawyer. We applied for another grant, Ohio Cooperative Development Center, and we got money to pay a lawyer to incorporate us as a cooperative. That might be a structure that you might consider. It's really not that hard to do, and there's a lot of help out there to do it. Um, so what, what did we do? The first thing we did is we put together a team. Since we're a cooperative, we need a board of directors. You need a manager. You need a producer. You need a marketing person. Pressure money person. Instead of a place to do the work. When it first started, I was all of those. <laughs> I was the board of directors, the manager, the producer, everything. Uh, I can't do that. Uh, we have a, five people in a board now. Uh, we have um, somebody that really likes to write newsletters. Somebody that knows how to use QuickBooks. Uh, and the three producers that started with. And then another person that's at a college level who's a real food advocate, food policy advocate. So when you look for a board, you really have to not just look for people, but look what they can do for you and how they can help your organization move forward. I am the managing. I am the manager right now. So this is a job for me. I get paid to do this. This takes a lot of time. And uh, to make this work, you kind of need a boss. You need a leader. You need somebody to be calling, getting on people, nagging them. You know, making sure things get done. Uh, so that's what I do. I'm a producer. I grow a little bit, but mostly I'm aggregating from the other. Okay, so these are some of the things. What the the manager kind of paperwork that you have to do when you form a cooperative. And that what we did this year was we filed business papers to incorporate. Uh, you have to open a bank account, get insurance, uh, create budgets, and then when you're working with all these growers, you have to make up your rules, decide you know what everybody's going to agree upon, how are you going to work together, uh, membership agreements, um, creative brochures, and uh, there's this um, farm. It's called local harvest, a multi-farm CSA handbook, and that was also done with said funds and. It's a really useful resource if 
if you want to work with a lot of farmers and try to have a big um, product. And that is on the website. I got it from the website. It's a very um, useful resource. So it's not a new idea. <laughs> this was our brochure. We have a logo. I hire a friend of mine to do the little logo. And, uh, it's kind of a very general brochure. And then we have little schedules with different drop off sites so that we don't have to keep changing our brochure. Um, now we got the funds in July, and it was really hard to find customers at that point. So I said, well, if we cannot get people to buy CA shares, how can we still start up, uh, starting this year, sell some products? And, uh, so I have a personal CSA as money for farm, and I had customers that would give me money so that I would deliver food to people to people food bank ministries and etc. So I said, why don't I just extend that to this? You know, we can make it more formalized and get more people to give us money. And uh, we got about seven hundred dollars for people to people last year to take the produce, and they got. People think that food banks just want canned goods, and it's not true. They, they like fresh food. So we did bring a lot of fresh produce over there. And it was really, really great. And we were very grateful for that. The farmers were grateful because I paid them good prices for these people. It was kind of a win win situation. And then the people that gave the money got their um, tax deductions. So that's something I want to continue doing. Uh, we did a small trial CSA. We went to a lot of meetings. We went to Cleveland Clinic. We went to the ORDC. And um, we did get six customers, five customers from the ORDC. So I said, well, we'll just do it, see what the kinks are. So that's in local roots, the back room of local roots, and that's in the house. And we had a newsletter. And uh, Alan Steele is the one that writes this newsletter. Uh, so one of the most important things about the newsletter is who is bringing what. And that's one of the things that we thought was important was to be able to tell people, well, your cabbage comes from here, your um, bell peppers come from Muddy Pork Farm. Uh, a lot of people are doing CSAs in order to hire, you know, that there's a lot of competition. A lot of people are doing what we're trying to do, but calling themselves CSAs and are not CSAs, they're basically aggregators that resell. And they're tremendous competition for us. So we have to define ourselves as farmer owned. Uh, that's our thing. You know, we're not reselling anybody, we're selling anything for anybody, and they will know who's giving them what. So it's that traceability. That's going to be a big thing. So that was one of the newsletters. We got to put those on my card now. And recipes. What's that? Is your newsletter on the website? You know, since we only had five customers, we were printing it out. <laughs> but <laughs> if we ever get to where I want to go, 100, 200 customers, if, we might still print it out. Because people really do like to get it out of the bag and read it, even though it wastes a lot of paper. But I will post it on a website that we have. Having had a little bit of experience of having with the people to people um, donations, we decided to start getting a little bit of funds ahead of time. So in December, we did uh, gift cards so that people could buy shares for people to people, and then we would give them a little Christmas card and became donating somebody else's name. So we went to an alternative gift market at a Presbyterian church. And uh, we, I was there for about two hours. We got over $1,000 for people to people. So we have already some money to give them to others. So that's a little bit of what we're going to be doing next. And then we sent Christmas cards to our CSA customers and to our donors, trying to keep people happy, keep it going. It's, it's the biggest challenge is getting customers. Uh, but 
tried to get in the front a little bit. This was in the clean of pain dealer. Uh, there you go, the public commission. Um, women farmers. Uh, there's a little bit of farm disconnection. It's nothing about women farmers. Yeah? But, and uh, also with the roots, local paper. So what do we do next? Well, it's been really nice to have those grant funds to pay the manager, but it's not going to pay for itself forever. So we are very concerned about how to make a business model sustainable so that we can hire somebody to manage it. Without a leader and a boss and a manager, it's not going to happen. Uh, we need to recruit more producers. We need to increase our customer base. And that is really the biggest challenge, is getting more customers in my very competitive market. Uh, Getting known, trying to get a little more press, increasing the delivery to farmers markets, people, people donations, and working with other agencies. So, what do we need to be sustainable? Uh, we need to have really good producers that are consistent, that are there all the time that we can count on. We need repeat satisfied customers. We need to educate consumers on how to use this, keep, keep them coming, keep them buying our stuff. Uh, generate income, we charge a 20% commission on all CSA sales. Uh, we kind of work with numbers that should be able to cover our costs. We're not for profit, we just want to, you know, come out even. Um, it seems a little high to some farmers. A local roots we sell with a 15% commission sale, but this is a, a a sale done and over with. There's no spoilage. You, it's done. You know, you've sold it. Uh, so you don't. We don't buy inventory and then hope to sell it. You know, we sell the inventory and then buy it from our producers. So we're not wasting that. Provide outstanding service and then remain local and, and maintain the appropriate size. I think this could get too big and it could get out of hand and become. Not profitable, just a problem. This is our website. It's not a very good website. It's WordPress. A very amateur person did it, and I, another amateur, tried to add on to it. But uh, I think it was important to have the presence. No matter, you know, even if it wasn't great, just have the website there, you know, people can find stuff. They can download documents. Uh, to become a producer, this is what if you're there's a, a membership guidelines, a marketing agreement, and a, a preliminary bid sheet. So why do why do you think you can sell to us? So at least it's out there, people can download the documents you need. At some point I think we do need to improve our website, but I don't think it's a priority right now. Just get out there first. Uh, our guidelines, uh, these are just highlights. Uh, all the producers are required to be members. They must be in Ohio. They only can sell products that they grow themselves or produce themselves. They have to have all the licenses. You know, if, if they sell chickens or whatever, they need appropriate licenses. Um, they need to disclose the joint packages. And if they're organic certified, it's great. But if they have other natural Sustainable practices, we will consider anybody that's doing the right thing. This is, I won't go through that. That's just a lot of stuff that uh, is in our market agreement, in our guidelines. It's just, we, we're very detailed of, you know, what they have to do, what's allowed, what's not allowed. Gap training is one of the things that we require. I think more and more everybody's going to be asking for that. And then in our marketing agreement, there's a lot of stuff about bring your stuff on time, you know, don't be late, package it right, don't have any spillage, you know. It's just sort of, sort of housekeeping details so that putting those shares together is easy. Our, in, our, in our grant, we originally asked for money to rent a truck, refrigerated van, we put that out of the grant. And now what we found is that the entire square market in Athens, what they offered us because they mark they need to increase their producers in the market. We need a place to deliver. And uh, what they're offering us is that each farmer can go to 
to the market, sell their own stuff, and deliver the share. And that is a, a really good situation for everybody because nobody wants to do the whole market the whole season. We want to do five or six markets. So we're sharing that market. We can take our own products and deliver the shares and sell the shares and get known that way. It's not the best market you know, in terms of sales for funds, but it's a good enough market. And the cooperative will pay the mileage to the farmer to do this. And maybe a small fee, if, we're, if, if the number of shares get really big, we might pay a fee per share to do the delivery. And we're going to have to buy a vehicle or insurance. And it should be a really good way that might work for us. My slides are going to be disorganized. I also recruited producers with us for the fun. This was our mission statement, and I put this at the end because this is really where we want to go. And it's you know, sustainable, profitable cooperative distribution system that's farmer owned. Increase the sales opportunities for our farmers and educate our consumers on healthy eating. Um, You know, I, I put the wrong presentation. <laughs> it's all wrong. Uh, this is not really what I want to say, but that is important. You be adaptive. It's what you set out to do is not necessarily what you're going to do, and uh, be positive. And really, we're doing the right thing. So just keep at it. And it's the right thing to do. We are the leaders. We do need to save the world, and this is our way of doing it. So thank you. Thank <laughs> you.